Hello everybody. Today is a camera from the future. Or at least what Canon thought people might think of as a futuristic camera. It's not a camcorder. It's a 35 millimeter camera. The Canon Fotura was known as the Epoca, E-P-O-C-A, in Europe, and the Autoboy Jet in Japan. It was made in 1990 and 91. This is the lens cap, the on-off switch, and the flash. For a camera this weird, it has a surprisingly good powered zoom lens. It goes from 35 to 105 millimeters. It's f2.8 at widest, and f6.6 is its widest aperture uh, when it's zoomed to 105 millimeters. Stops down to f27. It's a pretty sophisticated lens. It's 10 elements in 9 groups. Close focus is 2.6 feet, about 0.8 meters, and you use this rocker moving it side to side to control the zoom. It was succeeded by the Fotura 135 in 92. Uh, the 135 millimeter lens, the longer lens, came at the expense of speed, and its largest aperture was f3.2. For having such a nice lens, the shutter is also a surprise, but not really in a good way. It goes from 2 seconds to 1 250th of a second. The uh, manual recommends 200 to 400 ISO film to prevent camera shake. It's a viewfinder, not an SLR. I thought, you know, just looking straight through, that this was the viewfinder lens. But that is the autofocus receiver. This tiny thing right next to it, between it and the uh, metering window, is the front of the viewfinder lens. It's actually smaller than the self-timer LED. And the window at the bottom is the infrared autofocus emitter. There's also a low angle viewfinder. You switch it from eye level with this. It switches it and uncovers this window. Um, they didn't call it waist level for a reason. It's tiny. The manual even shows somebody using it kind of scrunched over the camera like this. It's a great concept. Um, the Yashica T4 Super almost nailed it. This one is just flat out too small. I mean, maybe if you were down in the grass getting a picture of a bug or something, you might be able to use it. Don't get me wrong. I don't completely hate this camera. Uh, it just has some really good ideas implemented really badly. Uh, the back panel is nice and clean and simple. It's got a diopter adjustment slider from minus two to zero. The flash cycles from off to on to slow sync. There's a separate red eye control and that does a little bit of a pre-flash. One thing that's weird is it's selectable even when the flash is disabled. The drive cycles from, see what I've got it set on, single, where it's not really showing you anything, to continuous, this camera will do one frame per second, and fixed framing zoom, when it's got this little arrow pointing to it. It zooms to maintain a fixed magnification at varying distances. The manual says it's for portraits and to keep the same proportion in your prints. To me it seems a little bit like an answer in search of a question, but it can do it. There's also a 10 second self timer and what they call infinity mode. Uh, it's this mountain icon over here. You have to hold the button and then press the shutter to get it. Uh, Canon's manual says you can, you can achieve even sharper pictures by using it. 
Viewfinders to my eye, my left finger is pressed against the bottom of my nose while I press the shutter with my right hand. I have no idea if there was a left-handed version of this camera, but why is this even a thing? I mean, it seems like if it sends an infrared beam and doesn't get anything back, it should focus at infinity. So the indicators on the back, the red LED lights solid if the flash is ready. I have a different mode going there. And it blinks slowly to tell you to use the flash. I'm not sure what the, the shutter speed is for that. And then it blinks fast. Did it a while ago. Anyway, it blinks fast to tell you that red eye is enabled. So the green light is steady if uh, your subject is in focus. It blinks slowly if the subject is too close. And then it blinks fast if single spot focusing is enabled. Single spot focusing is another good idea, kind of bizarrely implemented. Um, as you probably know if you watch my channel, cameras that lock focus and exposure together with a half press, they do make me nuts. You can't get up close and set the exposure and then recompose. So apparently this camera enables autofocus and auto exposure with a half press but doesn't lock them. You can enable focus lock by half pressing and then while holding the shutter button you have to move the zoom rocker. You just you know, kind of tab it, and then it blinks that green light really fast to let you know that it's locked. Maybe this works, but it's backwards from the way I think. I usually get the exposure and then, and then compose. I want to lock the exposure and then focus, not lock the focus and then let the auto exposure do its thing. Not to mention the gymnastics involved. You have to reach across the camera with your left hand to rock the shutter or to rock the zoom switch to set the mode and then press the shutter with your right. I mean I guess you could press the shutter with your middle finger and work the rocker with the index finger but then your hand doesn't really fit the hand grip which other than that is pretty well ergonomically designed. Film loading uh, is easy if unconventional. You put your cartridge in with the flat side up, the little protruding piece that's normally to the bottom um, goes in first. Then you bring your leader out and around to this film stop mark and then close the door. Um, it's cool, but you got to do this weird little S-curve in the film. Uh, it reads DX encoded film from 25 to 3200. If you put in a non-DX encoded cartridge, it sets it to 25. There is a separate battery door right here. So if you're working and your battery goes dead because it's under the same big door, you can swap the battery without opening the film chamber. The door is not attached, so I'm kind of amazed that any of these running around still have their battery doors. Something like that is just begging to get lost. But I will end this on a high note. Like I said, I don't hate this camera. The flash is amazing. It's guide number 39 to 82 feet. That's 12 to 25 meters. And this Fresnel lens in front of the flash moves as you work the zoom. Kind of reminds me of the Polaroid Big Shot, only smarter. Um, it's just brilliant. They should have made the guy who was the zoom team leader the head of this project. And then maybe it might not have had so many, ooh, almost nailed it, but then not quite. Um, I do love weird cameras. This one's maybe even a bit much for me. It's a lot like the Shinon Genesis and Olympus did their IS series. They were kind of bridge cameras shaped like camcorders. Um, 
The next one that I do really want to try, though, the Yashica Samurai is this same kind of a camcordery thing, but it's a half-frame camera. Because it's got that extra weirdness, they're kind of in demand and prices stay high. So, anyway, I'm going to dig out something simple and mechanical to clear my head, and I'll see you then.